here's a segment from the latest edition of St. Charles Parish Today, a monthly local talk show. He's a native of Hanville and has served as a District 1 representative on the St. Charles Parish Council since 2012 and is now serving as its chairman. Here with me today is Councilman Terrell Wilson. Well, Tara, I want to thank you for coming on with me today. Thank you for having me. For sure. Okay, so this is your first time, I think, on the show, so I'm going to yes, ask just a few questions uh, about you. Okay. Where do you work? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, lifelong resident of St. Charles Parish, uh, 59 years old, retired from a uh, Dow Chemical, formerly Union Carbide. Uh, I work for the school system as a part-time uh, bus driver, I sub on the bus. I have a 27-year-old daughter, 5-year-old grandson enrolled in the public school system. Uh, just glad to have finally got an opportunity to uh, serve on the parish council you know, in my second term, but I'd run unsuccessfully dating back to 1999, and then I ran again unsuccessfully. So, you know, in, in the uh, year number six. Uh, on yes, my, it's been quite a few years you've been on the council. Yes, and st still enjoying it. Yeah. Well, so speaking of the council, right now, in addition to being the District 1 representative, you're also the council chairman. Um, and what is, does exactly does that entail? And I always ask this when we interview one of the officers in the council because I think people don't know a lot of the extra duties you, you have right now as the chairman. Okay. Well, as a council chair, I, there's a lot more interface with the CAO and the parish president than I had when I just had district councilman responsibilities. Um, other than running the meetings, and, and, and there's a lot more dialogue between my colleagues because I try to just, just because I'm the chairperson, I want to have, you know, input. And, you know, many a times, like the saying is, we can, let's agree that we're going to disagree, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, a lot of the decisions we make is not unanimous, but, you know, we, in addition to representing just a district, we have to look at the overall picture of, you know, the, what's best for the parish, you know, because right. I'm, I'm fortunate there are four communities that make up District 1, and uh, we have, you know, the elevation of uh, the property is high, so I don't have any pumps, at least I want to say there's one pump in the area of Booty, it's in the Booty uh, project area, but uh, all the other uh, neighborhoods, they dr gravity drain through ditches and canals, and um, into the swamp area. Which actually kind of gets me into my next question. <coughs> what are some of the issues affecting your district? Uh, district 1, that is. Well, District 1 has had, I inherited some drainage issues, and a lot of it dealt with acquiring property. Uh, two major areas, one was a Horn Street drainage improvement project that was on the book when my predecessor, Billy Raymond, was a council person. And uh, we had some issues trying to uh, come up with a fair price on the property that was probably 90% of the property we needed was, was good land and 10% was wetland. So based on the appraisal, you know, we had some um, conflict and we're still working at, you know, matter of fact, I have right now $350,000 in the budget to acquire the property. We've held off on getting another appraisal until we could, um, the family has agreed to sit down at the table right now and negotiate with good faith with the help of our current public work uh, director, Mr. Clayton Fosche, and we spoke with representatives. So I'm, I'm optimistic that before the end of this year, we should have an appraisal and maybe move in the direction of acquiring the property and improve the drainage around the area where uh, Carver School is. And then the other areas, a little further upriver, um, the streets are Aquarius and Butternut. They have some drainage issues because I had, we received, each of us on the council received the questionnaire from the Herald Guide at the mm -hmm. beginning of our term in 2016. And it, it pretty much asks us what you would like to get accomplished in your four years. Your and, and it was drainage in those particular areas. Booty doesn't have drainage problems. A few problems that we've had in the Kelowna area, we've worked with public works to acquire the necessary permits from the uh, Department of Natural Resources to clean a lot of the, the swales or drainage areas south of the Union Pacific Railroad because we have good drainage systems and most of my areas are open drainage so it's not subsurface but when you get under the railroad track and you get through areas that are where the property where you got to get permits and permission from property owners that's where we uh, you know see higher than the normal levels in the ditches in the community but we're blessed to be in an area that's so highly elevated it's just that the problems and as a lot of my constituents, elderly, you know, they'll share with me stories sometimes like, I'm 70 years old and I've never seen this much water in a ditch, but then I've learned a lot about drainage and if things, whatever happens in Bayou Gosh and Lake DeZelmas and those lakes, if you have a high tide, the water that we're trying to get out of our neighborhoods mm -hmm. is trying to get where the water is higher then. So it just right. takes a little while. But once the rain stops, 
the water goes away. So we got good drainage system. And, and you touched upon a few things, but <coughs> some of the projects in your district, they're, they're mostly drainage related, correct? Mostly drainage related. I do have a, uh, it's been on the books for quite some time and I was hoping that before the end of uh, my tenure in 2019, it would be the last two phases of a bicycle path. It, it, well, I know uh, that one, they, people are waiting for that yeah, one. Yeah, we, we've gotten up to Elm Street and Hornville, but when it's completed, we'll be, uh, uh, at St. John Parish Line. And some of the challenges that I have, unlike my colleague, Ms. Tracy Fletcher in Narco, we have to pass Waterfoot, a lot of industry. Yeah, so yeah. you gotta get, you know, a lot of the bicycle paths, you'll be on the levee and you have to go down and get around pipe racks. So it's a lot of uh, existing piping that, you know, chemical plants use. So that, I don't see that being completed by 2019. Although looking at a timeline, it took five years from when the parish was notified of an award in the narco area. Mm -hmm. So right now, five years from our notice puts me at 2019. So, but it's, it's happening. It's Maybe happening. not as quickly as we want, but yeah. sometimes that's the way with government. Right. Um, so let's talk about the council and just the legislative aspect of your job. Is there okay. anything that you guys are working on legislatively? Uh, legislatively, I find in the last five years up to and including now, when it comes to public safety and a lot of the traffic that we have, 3127, you know, we've been fortunate and blessed with the support of Senator Gary Smith and State Representative Randall Gaines and State Representative Greg Miller to get acceleration and deceleration lanes on 3127. I have a resolution in right now asking DOTD to consider the possibility of a deceleration lane that wasn't funded in a project that started a year and a half ago at LA 3141 and LA 3127, uh, which is in the Kelowna area. And Councilman Hogan, he's got one that we just put forward at the last council meeting uh, dealing with Bayou Guys Road in LA 632. So that is one project. Another one that I'm proud to see will be completed by the end of my term is a lot of residents in the East Bank portion of my district in the Red Church, uh, Dashrahan area, for many years, over a decade ago, wanted a red light at Longview in LA 48, where after several resolutions and not getting the support, the state came back and they said, we're not gonna give you a red light, but we'll give you a turn lane. And okay. then they stepped it up and then they added three additional turn lanes. So I was you know, excited about the three additional turn lanes, which will be at River Oaks, Dastrahan Avenue in Murray Hill. But I never thought that in order to get the turn lane, you have to widen River Road. In order to widen River Road, there's a lot of infrastructure things which whenever there's uh, progress, that's gonna be inconvenience. Right. So Entergy just completed the removal of all of the utility poles on the East Bank of, in District 1 and all of the electrical, the grid support system is underground. Now the uh, highway department is subsurface in the ditch in front of St. Charles Borough Mail. So there's gonna be drainage improvements, widening of the roads, and uh, after all of that's done, then we're gonna look at myself along with the administration and Parish President Cochran's support about increasing lighting because uh, a lot of the lights that were on the poles on the levee, when the poles went, we lost the lighting. Right. So, uh, but that's, that's one big project. Well, that it I'm sounds proud like you're busy. <laughs> extreme, extremely busy. I mean, I wonder how I had time to do this when I was right. in the workforce working full time, but, yeah, but I enjoy now it. You're retired, Thor yeah. Thoroughly enjoy it. Absolutely. Well, is there anything else that you're working on that you want residents to know about? Anything you want to highlight? Uh, I had uh, inherited a project in the Kelowna area after a lot of data was collected uh, with Ms. Joan Diaz and Department of Community Service that there was a need for a community center to support services. You know, we had a lot of kids were getting tutoring and we were using buildings like the Kelowna Volunteer Fire Department, which really wasn't conducive for what for, we used. For that, yeah. So after about five and a half years of getting funding together, you know, uh, I had some money from a predecessor. We uh, cut the ribbon the beginning of 2016 on a 2,600 square foot building. And uh, it seems it, like it was just yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's utilized and we're even considering, I've set aside some money for architectural fees and in addition to that building. And we also have a rough draft to possibly add about seven to 800 square feet. And that would uh, uh, accommodate additional library support from the library system and we've also had representatives from our St. Charles Public School System. They visited the center. So right now we just, when we're supporting elderly programs, you know, the youth have to wait because the building is not mm -hmm. large enough to accommodate both. So we're getting ready to begin the summer enrichment program and I'm pretty sure we probably 
could only accommodate 40 kids. And when I spoke with the one day last week, we were over 30. Right. So you'll be turning kids away until we can enlarge the building. But I'm proud to say that I have. It's being uh, used and it's really, I, a, it's a wonderful facility. I have a group on the council and even, you know, from the previous uh, administration, the previous co uh, colleagues on the council, you know, we look at things that, you know, going on in different districts. And first and foremost, when it comes to drainage and doing what needs to be done, so people can you have uh, flood insurance affordably. You know, I'll, my uh, quality of life projects, I'm willing to sit and wait patiently. Yeah. And you know, eventually, you know, we, we all support each other in whatever endeavors we can, whether it's flood and drainage things. But a lot of people who decided to buy property and reside in St. Charles Parish is because of the great school system. And you don't want to deprive the quality of life projects, Correct. although the continuation of the levy. It's a balance, the, I think. Right, you know, this levy project, you know, that with, you know, the, the taxpayers having the confidence in their elected officials, you know, we put this self-imposed tax in place where we raise over $4 million a year, but, you know, that's, that's going to be a long time coming when you're raising $4 million a year and you're trying to complete a $500 million project. And, you know, that project protects, you know, residents, it protects schools and all of the additions that we see going on in the parish with the school system. So hopefully, you know, with the relationships that I, I see being built right now, our parish president meets with the sheriff and the superintendent. So we will all put our heads together and see what we can do to continue to make forward progress. Uh, even you know when I'm no longer as a public servant elected official, mm -hmm. I'll probably retire from this and become a member of, on the board because that's how I started out. I started out in June of 1984 on a housing authority board and I served on two planning commission boards and that gave me the interest of desire to want to, you know, seek public office. And uh, if once I leave public office, I'll have, if uh, not already so, done so, great appreciation of how government works because right. a lot of your constituents, right. they want it now. And right. when you see that how rarely things ever work, happens in it, government. It, it never happens in government. But, you know, it's, it's a way a legal way to support some of the wishes that they have. It just, you know, you have to be patient and, and wait because I'm competing with eight other colleagues on the yep. council, a limited amount of money. And, you know, a lot of times the administration is aware of projects that where you can get the most bang for your buck. That's what, what I want is, is direct the tax dollars where we get the most bang for our buck, get the highest rate of return. Absolutely. Well, look, thank you for coming on with me today. Thank, it was a thank pleasure you having for having you. Thank you. We'll have you back. Okay. Thank you. Look for the entire episode at www.scptoday.com or on SCP-TV.